Hello and welcome to a new video from ElastiCourse. In the previous virtualization video, I showed you how to use VMware ESXi platform to start your own virtualization server. And we use this type one hypervisor to host virtual machines and convert our machine into a multitude of machines using VMs. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Proxmox, one of the biggest competitors for VMware and it's also a really robust and good solution for starting your own virtualization server. Now Proxmox has multitude of products, but the one we are interested in is the Proxmox virtual environment. Proxmox virtual environment will transform your computer into a virtualization server. You install this on the bare metal or you install it directly as the main operating system of the machine. And then you can use a web-based GUI, very similar to ESX, to manage this platform, upload ISO files, start virtual machines. Proxmox also comes with out of the box integration and support for Linux containers or LXC containers. These containers are different from Docker containers I talked about before, but they share the same container concept with Docker, which is running application directly and sharing the kernel with the host OS, being in this case the Proxmox operating system which is based on Debian so it's open source it's free to use and you get like community support without having to pay anything for enterprise and companies they can opt in for higher support which is paid for first thing you're going to do is go to proxmox.com downloads and in here you will see the proxmox iso file the latest version they have as of now is 6.4 so i'm going to download this iso file now to be able to burn this ISO file into a USB flash drive so that we can install it on our system is we need to use a tool like Rufus or Belina Etcher. I usually recommend Rufus because it tends to be more reliable but Etcher works well for this case as well and it has a little bit more modern design so let's try this for this time. So I just searched for Etcher or Belina Etcher and I'm gonna download the portable version of the app so this way i don't have to install it so now i'm in itcher i'm just gonna go ahead and flash from file i'm gonna choose the proxmox iso file i just downloaded and for the target i'm gonna choose my usb drive and just click flash now i took the flash drive into the pc that i want to convert into a hypervisor I open the boot menu by abusing the F8 button on the keyboard and I choose to boot from the USB drive. I had to go through a simple setup just providing the country, the root password to log into the web GUI and finally the disk that I want to use to run virtual machines and run the Proxmox environment. So I went ahead and at the end it just rebooted and it gave me the address HTTPS, the IP address of the device and it guided me to access the web GUI to control the system. Now, I just want to make it clear that Proxmox and all the virtual machines nested under the system will need to be able to get IP addresses from your router or your firewall so that you can get their own IP addresses and can be communicated with. So in my case, I'm using the 40 gate firewall and I have my PC that I installed Proxmox on directly connected to this interface, the DMZ interface. This is running the network 10.1.10.0 slash 25. So it's a small network and I made sure that there is a DHCP server running and it's providing IP addresses from this range inside the subnet. So this is how my virtual machines and the Proxmox itself is able to get IP addresses. As you've seen here, there's one DHCP client, which is the Proxmox itself. And all the virtual machines in the future will also be inside this pool. So you have to make sure that you have DHCP server running. And this is usually implemented by default into most consumer routers. So I'm just going to log into the system now. HTTPS 10.1.10.10. .10 .10. This is the IP address that the Proxmox got. And it was showing on the screen. And the board in this case is a custom board. So you have to make sure you put the board in the end like this 8006 is the management board over https so you have to boot both parts in order for the gui to work 
Now we're going to use root as the username and the same password we said during the installation from the USB drive. Now this alert is related to the premium support. You can just ignore this. Now, as you can see, this GUI is a little bit cleaner and simple. It has a lot to share with the ESX web GUI as well. Once you go into summary, you will see in here that there is the health status for your Proxmox environment. There is a bunch of stats for virtual machines and the LXC containers. We also have this nice view for our CPU and memory usage and our storage. This is our nodes or our host in the system. This is our dev or the host I'm running right now, 10.1.10.10. Everything is showing and the reason it's showing you the nodes is because this system actually supports clustering and having multiple hosts on the system for free, unlike ESX, which is a very big advantage, which is in here in this cluster configuration. Now we only have one computer, so unfortunately we cannot test this clustering, but it's there to explore if you have multiple machines and you want to explore a free clustering virtualization option. Now let's go ahead into storage. You'll see in here, this is our local storage, which is used for ISO images, for backup, for containers. So let's go ahead and access this storage right from this menu. This is local dev. And in here we'll see an option for ISO images. We had very similar in ESX, which was called data store browser and we were able to upload ISO images so that we can use them as templates or rather images to start virtual machines. So I want to go ahead and upload some of my favorite images. First image I want to upload is Manjaro, which is a Linux distribution with GUI. And as you see, this is being uploaded over the network. Now as simple as that, now we have an ISO file we can mount to any virtual machine in the future to install Manjaro. Now let's also upload another Ubuntu server. So now we have all the ISO files that we can use in the future. Now let's see how we can create the first VM using Proxmox. Now you just click create VM. This is our single host div. Let's call this one Manjaro and just go ahead and click next. Now from here we just click the ISO file. So this is very simple. We can keep everything as is. This is Linux newer kernel so everything seems correct we don't need anything to do with the graphic card just a 32 gig disk now for the cpu since this distribution uses a gui i just want to give it two cores just to give it a little bit more performance and maybe four gigs of ram so 4096 finally the network this is running on the bridge, so this is going to get another IP address separate from this 10.1.10.10, uh, .10, but also in the same network. Now let's click next. Everything looks good. Let's start. Click finish. As you see, this is now my virtual machine. Now from here, I can just click the console and I get right into the GUI from the browser which is really nice very similar to esx i think it works even better in proxmox but this is subject to everybody's opinion now as you see once the install is complete now we can access the full linux gui from the proxmox in the browser it's very nice let's see which ip address we got so this machine got 10.1.10.11 the very next ip after the proxmox ip itself so now as simple as that, we were able to install our first Linux distribution in Proxmox. Everything works smooth from the browser and it's a very reliable solution. Now when it comes to creating VMs, it's good to keep security in mind and segregation as well. So right in this case, if you remember the IP address we got for this machine was 10.1.10.11. So they are living in the same network as the hypervisor. And the issue with this, in case of any VM scapes or any attacks that happen to the VM, it's possible for the attacker or the hacker to have access to your hypervisor layer by having them in the same network. So what we want to do in this case, we want to try to build another network segregated just for virtual machines 
so we can have an isolation layer between the hypervisor and the VMs. And the way we can do this is by creating a special VLAN just for this traffic. Now, since I'm running a firewall, this traffic has to go through the firewall and I have to allow or deny this access. But if you have a normal router that allows enter VLAN communication, it's going to be useless. But in this case, since I'm running a firewall, this is going to be very useful. So let's see how we can do this. We have to go back to the firewall and look into the interface. This was our interface DMZ 10.1.10.0/25, and here you can see the two clients, the Proxmox and the virtual machine itself running Manjaro. So what I want to do is create the VLAN right now by creating a new interface. As you see, the default in this case is VLAN, and I want to call this VMNet. And for the main interface, this will be under the same interface connected to the hypervisor. So this is the DMZ, and for the VLAN ID, we're just gonna put a unique number for this VLAN to be segregated from the non tag traffic or the original traffic on the DMZ interface. For example, I want to use number 120. This will be my VLAN ID. And let's choose a separate network for this one. For our normal DMZ, it was 10.1.10.0. So for this network, let's give it 10.2.10.0 25. We want to give the first IP address of the subnet to the firewall or the router to be the gateway. So it's going to be 10.2.10.1 is the firewall IP. And we're just going to go ahead and enable the HP server so the virtual machines can get an IP address if we do this. So all the IP addresses will start from 10.2.10.2. You can modify this, make it start from 10.2.10.20. This is the subnet mask. In a server, we can specify 1.1.1.1. So now every client in the VMNet will be tagged with this VLAN. It will not be able to communicate with the Broxmox layer directly without a firewall policy allowing it to do so, which provide us an extra layer of security. So now as you see, our sub interface VLAN 120 VMNet is now ready for use. And I just want to go ahead and create a new virtual machine and have it added to this interface. So we're going to go ahead and create another VM. This one we're going to use the Ubuntu server because it's one of my favorites. We're going to choose the Ubuntu 2104. I'm just going to use the same disk size. For Ubuntu server, there is really no GUI, so one core is okay. And two gigs is also okay. Now it comes to the important part in the network. Remember we are using the bridge. This is the DMZ interface on the firewall connected to the PC. Previously we did not use a VLAN tag so we were just getting IP addresses from the same network. Now if you put the same VLAN number here which was VLAN 120 we should be able to get an IP address from this segregated network. So I just want to put 120 in here. Click next and just start also. Now, as you see, the IP address the machine got during the setup is 10.2.10.20, which is the first IP address in here. Actually, if we refresh this page, we should be able to see that there is an extra client in the DHCP here. So now we achieve the segregation pool. And you will see in a minute that this machine will not be able to access anything else. In fact, the machine is not even able to access the internet right now because this new interface is not added to our internet access policy. So as you see in here, it will not be able to access the internet. And it's just going to continue without updating. Back to here, let's grab the IP address one more time. IP address 10.2.10.20 so i want to do ssh the last tick is the username 10.2.10.20 and here you go this is our first ubuntu server running on proxmox you want to take a backup of the virtual machine very similar to esx 
snapshot feature here is very powerful. You can very much come to snapshots. You see right now, this is the current moment. We can take a snapshot. This is our backup one or our first snapshot. In just a few seconds, now we have a snapshot from the virtual machine. We can use this at any time in the future to roll back in case something breaks. Very nice feature to be able to take snapshots or have them automatically created as well. Now, one of the best features I like in Proxmox is the easy way to clone virtual machines. Now, this is very useful in case you want to run something in masses and you don't want to go through the create VM process for every single machine. Now, with ESX, it was more harder to clone virtual machines. You had to go to a copyM based manual process and then registering the copied file to be able to clone the virtual machines. Broxmax, it's a lot easier. So from here, we can just click more and click clone. And this one will be our Ubuntu 2 server. And you can also use the current state of the virtual machine or you can directly clone the VM from the previous backup. Current state will be more replicating what is being on the server. So I just want to clone it. And the best part, it doesn't have to be powered off so that you can clone it. It can actually work with the machine running. This is the best part about it. Now it looks like our clone machine is ready. So let's try to start it. Now, as you see, I have my clone machine running. So now let's confirm what is the IP address on this machine. The IP address on this seems to be 10.2.10.21. So we got the very next IP address after the first machine. So let's try to SSH to the new machine, 10.2.10.21. Now, as you see, I'm in the second machine. And that's how simple it is to clone virtual machines using Proxmox. Another option for people who ask how to have a virtual machine run on Proxmox boot or run automatically once your hypervisor reboot. In this case, all you need to do is go to option, start a boot, edit this command and just make it enabled. This way, if Proxmox is rebooted or being updated, this Ubuntu 2 virtual machine is going to start again on its own with the system booting. Now we can create another VM for Windows. I tested it before and it works great. Exactly the same like Linux and runs very well from the browser as well. You can install also the guest agent for Windows or the QEMU guest agent for Windows. It's going to improve the performance a lot from the browser or you can also use remote desktop to connect to the Windows VMs. Now, the last thing I want to show you inside your host or Broxmox host still gives you CLI access to the hypervisor operating system, which is Debian based. As you see in here, this is Debian Linux. From here, I want to show you how you can add the black team just to make it easier for the eye to access this Proxmox GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here, wget, and I'm going to put this in the comment section also for you to try. This is a simple Python script that's going to add a dark team to Proxmox. So we downloaded the file and we're just going to run it with Python. So it's going to ask us if we want to install the theme. So it's going to put I. It's going to install some images and CSS files. And once it's done. And this is how the system looks like with the black theme. So if you want to try this Proxmox, just give it a try. Let me know your thoughts in the comment. And I'll see you next video.